And one thing I've done is I've interviewed lots of people who are ex-gay over the years, because I'm curious. Oh. I want to find out um, why these people lived in a homosexual lifestyle, and a lot of them was their choices. They, they were they were bullied. They were feminine kind of people, you know. Um, they were uh, th th they made bad decisions, and they ended up living in the homosexual lifestyle for, for a long time. But a lot of these people that I've interviewed are now born again Christians. Some of them are in ministry. Some of them are married and have kids. And uh, that's something that you, you won't hear much in the secular media these days, that people can be ex-gay, you know. And how do they talk about the treatment they get from the community they left? Well, they're absolutely attacked, absolutely um, shunned uh, because, you know, that the, the homosexual lobby will clearly say that they believe that they are born gay, that that's their, they haven't got a choice in it, you know. Uh, but, you know, we all have choices. We all have choices on who we uh, marry, who we live, uh, who we live with, who we who are attracted to. We all have choices uh, in how much sin we want to commit in our life, you know. And, and I just believe we, we should, you know, living, living God's way is always the best way. Yeah. Look, if born gay was a defence for homosexual marriage, then born attracted to more than one woman is a defence for adultery. That's a good point. That's a very good point. And it's just not. Mm. Your, your natural attraction does not, your natural inclination does not justify any kind of behaviour. Mm. Tell me how comfortable, or why aren't you comfortable about going into more detail on, on the, the rational, logical, love-motivated arguments you have for the traditional definition of marriage? Well, for me, I've seen a lot of Christians stand up and speak out over, over the years uh, for this issue. And unfortunately, they then get attacked and also they alienate the homosexuals. And like I know that we only talk about a small percentage of society. I mean, we've got to realise there's only one or two percent, uh, according to some surveys, uh, are homosexual in Australia. They might try and say it's about 10 percent, but it, I think it's a lot less uh, I'd, I'd say it's I think it's just I think it's just over two, maybe over two, but yeah, but yeah it's minuscule. But, but they try and paint out that it's like half half yeah. of the nation, you know. So it's a very small percentage, but a very vocal minority, uh, majority, uh, very mo vocal minority, I should say. Mm. Um, but you know, for me personally, I as a pastor, um, I uh, talk to homosexuals a lot. Um, I, I go around and work in homeless shelters, and and I have have homosexuals visit my church, and I have a heart for people who are in that lifestyle who are in that community and I want to talk to them openly and honestly um, without them feeling like I'm there pointing the finger and judging because we're, we're all sinners we all um, are off uh, track somewhere in our lives you know and I, and I don't want to come across as someone who is wanting to uh, you know shut the church doors because anyone's welcome at my church I, you know so I'm very aware that as soon as I start talking about homosexuality in the public sphere any homosexuals uh, I know will go oh there you go Matt hates us I don't want to talk to them. And I want to show them that Jesus loves them. I want to show them that they can uh, get their life on track, that Jesus can heal them, Jesus can set them free, they can have, uh, you know, that they can have the awesome life that God has planned for them if they start to put God first in their life. So that's, that's the message that I want to bring. Yet whenever you talk about these things, it's like, uh, they, it's like putting a wall up between uh, them straight away and, they, and they, they get offended and they think that we don't care about them and love them, you know. But we've got to have a heart for these people as Jesus did, you know. That's, that's really unfortunate and I hate that the ball's entirely our court to deal with that mm. because, because a parent doesn't set boundaries around the yard because they want to punish their children. They set boundaries around the yard because they don't want them playing under semi-trailers on the road. <laughs> it's love that motivates yeah a truthful communication of the boundaries. Mm. Like you don't go to the beach and hate on the lifeguards because they've put flags up where it's safe to swim between. Yep. You know, like that's not the lifeguard hating you or rejecting you or attacking your identity. Mm. That's the lifeguard saying, here's the safe place, have all the fun you want. Mm. This will be the bit that preserves and prolongs your life and maximizes your enjoyment. Mm. But they're still willing to go and get the people who wander outside those boundaries. Mm. That's not like, oh, you went out there, bad luck, you're on your own. Mm. But for some reason, when a pastor or a Christian says, hey, this is the truth, and out there is wrong and in here is right, out there is bad for you, in here is good for you, when we ex ex communicate those boundaries, it's all on us mm. if, if the, the person hearing the message gets offended. Mm. Well, hang on, I didn't mean to offend you. I don't hate you. I love you, and that's why I said... Truth. 
What, what is wrong with society that truth is hated, mm. that, that truth is a message of hate? Mm. When why, Kevin Rudd said it's not compassionate to tell people. What? Mm. Why would you not tell somebody that something that is bad for them is bad for them? Mm. Do we do the same with anorexia? Mm. Mm. Like that's, a, that's an issue that people need compassionate working mm. through. And it's an interesting uh, thing you say about uh, truth, you know. I actually uh, believe in the exploding toad theory. You know how if you put a toad in a pot of hot boiling water, it'll jump out straight away because it's hot. Not that I've ever done this. Uh, but if you put a toad in uh, room temperature water and slowly turn it up, it won't realise that the heat is going up and it'll probably explode. You know, it will, will explode. Scientific, uh, you know, experiment. Um, I think that's what's happening in our world today and in the media today. Um, morals, ethics, values are slowly, slowly changing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, the whole media is so pro-gay. The whole, the, whole, the whole media is so anti-church. Uh, the whole media is so uh, anti-conservative uh, family values yeah. that the, this next younger generation, and that's what I'm concerned about, uh, the younger generation are now, uh, you know, believing what the media says rather than what the Word of God says and rather than what the church says. I think it's come down to an observable difference between virtue and virtue signalling. The media are more interested in proving they're virtuous with political mm. correctness mm. than genuine, truthful, mm. compassionate honesty. Mm. And it was a fascinating experiment for me after going on Q&A because that night after I asked that question, I just felt... Like, I honestly thought I was going to get lynched on the way. And my wife, who was with me, was she said, let's get out of here at the end of the night. So we walked down the stairs at the end of Q&A, and this beautiful young camera girl from the ABC came up. Her name was Grace. And she said, Pastor Matt, thank you for standing up for Jesus on the TV tonight. And it was like, I thought she was an angel. So wow. it was, that was an amazing, you know, I think that was a real nice. messenger from God. Thank then, you, Grace. But then as we walked to the car, um, my wife was literally terrified. We got home that night. And uh, my wife was hiding under the sheets, worried that someone's going to throw a brick through a window because it was a it was a hostile crowd. And um, that night, I turned my phone on. I had dozens of text messages. Um, I got five hundred new Facebook friends, four hundred new Twitter followers. Um, I got a over three hundred emails that week to my church, and a hundred phone calls to my church uh, all week. A majority of them, people saying, "Well done, Pastor Matt." Thank you for standing up for righteousness and for truth. Thank you for exposing uh, what Kevin Rudd believes about marriage. And um, it, from all over the world, I had people contacting me, you know. And then I also had the haters contact me. So I was labelled a homophobe. Yeah. I was labelled a bigot. I was labelled a hater. I had some people attack me and say, I'm going to rape your children because of what you said. Like, um, they're meant to be the love for all crowd. So I was surprised at how much uh, support I got but then also surprised at the, the vitriolic attack that was given to me uh, online. And uh, I, I ended up just having to stop read, stop stopping reading all of the, the negative stuff because, you know, you can't, you can't let that stuff get to you, you know. Um, I, I just believe that, uh, you know, the Lord wanted me to ask that question. And uh, I had so many people say, look, that was the, the nail in the coffin. They wouldn't vote for him, and they changed their vote because of that. Yeah, And, um, you know, thank God, I think, I think, I thank God that Tony Abbott got in, a good conservative politician yeah. with good, strong family values. Truth won. Yep, I, I really believe it did at that time. Um, but then the other thing is the next day, uh, I was on my talkback radio show on Vision Radio. The phones went crazy throughout the whole morning. Um, and uh, then I was interviewed by... Uh, Channel 10, 9, 7 and ABC all came to my church and interviewed me that day. Wow. Uh, I was, uh, the newspapers came and interviewed me, Cour Courier Mail, The Australian, Sydney Morning Herald all came and interviewed me and I was able to just explain uh, that I just believe the current definition of marriage should be held on to. And it's fascinating that it's changed in the States, in Ireland, in uh, a whole bunch of countries uh, around the world, um, and, but not a majority of countries, I should add, just, just some of them. But I just thank God that Australia has stuck, stuck to its guns yep. and we're holding firm to the definition of marriage. There is so much lobbying against it. And I talked to some politicians. I've got mates in politics and they said they get lobbied so much and pressured so much. Uh, and that as Christians, we need to stand up and speak out, which is why we need programs like Church and State, which is what you're doing, mate. Yeah. <laughs>